Hi, this is Mike from the Excel Trainer, and in this short video, I'm going to show you how to create a loan calculator. I'm using Excel 2011 for the Mac. However, what I show you will work for any version of Excel on both Mac and Windows. Let me first show you the finished calculator. In B22, we have the name of the person who the quote is prepared for, and that is just typed in as text. We then have the date of the quote, and the date the quote is valid until, and that is automatically calculated as 14 days from the date of the quote. The purchase price is typed in manually, and the deposit is 10% of the purchase price. If you're going to borrow money for buying this computer, then you have to put down a 10% deposit. Now this computer store is unique in that it will purchase your current computer, similar to trading in your car. And I've been offered £500 for my current computer, leaving a balance of £1,120. And that is what I need the loan for. The interest rate on the loan is 10% and the loan will be taken out over five years, which is 60 months. The first payment is always on the first day of the month that follows the month that the quote is valid until. In other words, in this case, because the quote is valid until the 6th of April, the next month is May, so the first payment is the 1st of May. The final payment is calculated automatically by working out uh, what date it will be 60 months from the first payment. We have the monthly payment. I'll show you how to calculate that. And the total cost is worked out by multiplying the monthly payment by the number of months. And then we have a summary sentence at the bottom, which tells us how many payments will be taken out, how much the payment is, and when the first payment will be. Now let me show you how I built it. I want to focus on the formulas, so I've already set up the headings, inserted an image, and applied some formatting. If I go up to B23, what I want in there is the date of the quote. Now, I could just type in the current date, but rather than me having to remember what date it is, I can get Excel to pull in the computer's date by typing a function in there, equals today. The today function takes no arguments, so I just put open bracket, close bracket, press enter. The cell's already been formatted to display as day, month, year, but it picks up the current date. Now, one problem is that if I was to save this file and reopen it tomorrow, it'll have tomorrow's date in it. I'll show you how to fix that uh, towards the end of the video. The quote valid until, as I said earlier, I want to add 14 days onto the date of the quote. So the formula in, in there is simply equals, to start a formula, B23 plus 14. Press enter. Again, I have already formatted the cell as day, month, year. The deposit is calculated as 10% of the purchase price. So the formula that goes into B28 is B27 multiplied by 10%. The balance is the purchase price less the deposit less the trading value. B27 minus B28 minus B29. As I said earlier, the first payment will be the first day of a month, and the month will be the month that follows the month of the quote valid until. So because the month valid until is April in this example, the first payment will be on the 1st of May. If the quote valid until had been March, then the first payment would have been on the 1st of April. To calculate this, I'm going to use the EO month function. The EO month takes a date and it calculates the last day of the month for a month that is a certain number of months away 
from, in this case, the month in B24. Because I want it to look at the month that's in B24, I put a zero in there. So I want it to look at the same month. If I left it at that, that would give me the date that is the last day of April. I want to add one day onto that, so I plus one. That gives me the 1st of May. The final payment is calculated as being, in this case, 60 months from the 1st of May. And the way to do that is to use the edate function. The edate function takes a date, which in this case is B35, the first payment, and adds a number of months onto it. In this case, 60, which is the length of the loan, B33. And that gives us the final payment. To calculate the monthly payment, I'm going to use the PMT function. The PMT function returns the payment amount for a loan based on an interest rate and a constant payment schedule. And it takes three arguments, the interest rate, the number of payments and the loan amount. So I put equals PMT, the interest rate, which is B32, comma, the number of payments, which is B33, comma, and the present value or the amount of the loan, which is a B30. Close brackets. Now, you have to be consistent with your time periods with the PMT function. So in other words, because we want to know what the monthly payment is, the interest rate must be expressed as a monthly rate. And at the moment, the interest rate is, dis is expressed as B32, which is 10%, and that is an annual interest rate. So to express that as a monthly interest rate, I divide that by 12 and press enter. Now, by default, the result of the PMT function is shown as a negative, and this is because it represents an outgoing payment. You wouldn't really want to see a negative value in your quote, so the simplest way to force the result to be displayed as a positive is to put a minus sign in front of the third argument. Go up to the formula bar and just put a minus sign in front of B30. That now gives us a positive monthly payment. To calculate the total cost, we simply multiply the monthly payment in B39 by the number of months in B33. And that tells us that to borrow £1,120 at 10% interest rate over 60 months, it's going to cost us £1,427.80. You can see that we now have a formula in uh, A44 which summarises that 60 payments of £23.80 will be taken from your account starting on the 1st of May 2013. Let's go and change some of the figures. So let's go and change the purchase price to £900. So it's a cheaper computer. We now only have to pay £90 deposit. We're still going to get £500 for our uh, old computer. So we're borrowing £310. The first payment is still the 1st of May. That's because the quote is valid until the 6th of April. But now the monthly payment, the total cost have changed, and that is reflected in the formula that's in A44. Let's put that back to 1800. So how do we do this formula here? I'll delete that out and I'll build it up from scratch. The first thing I wanted was the number of payments, which in this case is 60, it's in B33. So B33, use the ampersand, the and sign, because we're joining together blocks of text. And I wanted to say 60 payments of £23.80 and so on. So the payments of, because that is static text, goes in speech marks. payments of Now 
Now notice that I've got a space before the P of payments and after the F of of, because if I don't, then the sentence will all be squashed up together. It will say 60 payments without a space. After the payments of, we want the monthly payment itself, and that is in B39. Then we want some static text. So will be taken from your account starting on and we then want the date of the first payment which is B35. Enter. Now that's not quite right because what it's done is it's gone to B39 and it's not picked up £23.80 but it's picked up 23.796690076620605 because that is the actual value in that cell. It's £23.80 because of the formatting. And similarly, it's picked up the uh, the start date, which is the 1st of May, but the actual value in B35 is 41395, which is the serial number that represents the 1st of May uh, 2013. So what I need to do to fix that is to convert the value in B39 and the value in B35 to text. And that uses the text function, which also uh, defines how the text will be displayed. And rather than me typing it from scratch, I'll go up and edit it here. So um, click in there and put text, open brackets, and the text function takes two arguments. One is the cell that contains the value that I want to convert to text. And the second argument is the format of the text, which has to go in double quote marks. In this case, because I want to display the mo the monetary amount, total payment in pounds with two decimal places, I put a pound sign, zero, full stop, two zeros. Close brackets. And over here, I need to do a similar thing. Text, open brackets, the cell is B35. And I want to format that as DD four months or four M's to get the full month name, the full year. Close brackets and press enter. There we go. 60 payments of £23.80 will be taken from your account starting on the 1st of May 2013. One final thing, back to the date of the quote. As I said to you, equals today puts the current date into a cell, and that saves me looking up today's date. However, as I said, if I save the quote and reopen it tomorrow, it will show tomorrow's date. Therefore, before saving the file, what I can do is I can copy and then use paste values to paste the value of the formula or the result of the formula into the same cell that the formula is currently in. It works exactly the same way on the Windows version. Paste values. And what I now have in cell B23 is a date rather than a formula. Thank you for watching and I hope you found this useful.